Fireside Tales. Hello. I'm Merlin Malili. Welcome to my fireside where I tell weird tales within tales. And I drink coffee. I drink coffee from my skull mug because I'm a deadhead. So every week here at Fireside Tales, also because I'm a deadhead, I tell the tale of the Grateful Dead, which is a weird tale indeed. And I don't only tell the story of the Grateful Dead every week because I'm a deadhead, although it should be told by a deadhead by a fire, as I had it told to me, but because it's a story about reincarnation. And reincarnation is something we discuss here at Fireside Tales every week. It is my goal with this show to help people understand reincarnation better. So we have been discussing it at length. I've been talking to you every week about a place called the Akasha or the Akashic Records. I'm not the only one who knows about the Akashic Records. Um, Morgan Greer wrote about the Akashic Records. There's a lot of books and, well, there's a lot of books about the Akashic Records and then there's a lot of books that touch upon the Akashic Records. And in the Akashic Records, there's a lot of books because it's a library Except it's a metaphysical sort of library. It doesn't exist in the physical realm. It's a place that I can only reach through meditation and only since I received a key. My spirit guides gave me a key to the Akashic Records and then I... go there still with them. So, it's a meditative library in which every soul has a book. And it's a record of where, when, who, your soul has been. My book happens to be unusually large. It's very big and very old and very dusty. 
and not a, I haven't seen another book quite as large as mine. And I, I don't really go looking around the library, but I can compare to the shelves that are around me and none of the other books are quite that big. So, in my book, there are, well, the beginning of the book is light and dry and sandy, and the end of the book is dark and wet and muddy, and it seems to have a watermark right around where time changed from BC to AD. So I think it marks the great flood, the watermark. Everything before the watermark, like I said, is light and dry and sandy, and everything after is dark and wet and muddy. And then all my lives prior to the watermark are really long, like unusually long, like thousands of years. And then all my lives after the watermark are really short. In comparison. None of them last like over 50 years after the watermark. I don't, I don't think there's any that I made it Still haven't made it there this time around either, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> so, I have threads in my book that link each life to the next. And fire is one of those threads. Obviously, fire was super important once upon a time, right? But now I realize how important it is to my soul. And fire safety is also important because we don't want to burn down the forest or anywhere else for that matter. So Please be careful when you have a fire. If you're inspired by my fire, great. But be sure everything's safe. If you have it indoors, make sure you have a good stove and it has good ventilation and you get the smoke out of the house and all that. Also, if you're going to have a fire outside, you want to make sure that it's in a good location where there's no overhanging branches and no overhanging branches will grow into the area in case you want to leave it. Though, if you're at a rainbow gathering, you have to get rid of that before you leave the forest and even all evidence of it. So, bear that in mind when you build your fire pit. Uh, but, you want to dig down a bit so there's nothing growing and line your fire pit with rocks and line that with the rocks and then you could safely have a decent fire outside but you'll need a, a bucket and a shovel a bucket full of water and a bucket full of dirt you could have a pot full of water which is what i like to do i like to put a pot of water on so you have hot water for whatever your hot water needs might be there is hot water in my kettle up there always and 
I have hot water in my little cauldron, or not hot water, but water in my little cauldron for my smudge stick, which is my next thread. So these threads, they link each life to the next in my book. They are prevalent in each life. And they seem to be mostly things I hold dear. This is a smudge stick. It's dried sage. When it's bound up like this, they call it a smudge stick. I think they've been calling it that for a really long time. I know I've been using sage for cleansing my aura for thousands of years since my very first life. And the, that's what I use it for still. Cleansing my aura. You want to use this like a, like an incense kind of, but then you want to get the smoke. Into your aura. See, I'm not hiding anything in my apple. I just like it because it goes with my apple painting. And this, oh, look at that apple painting. That's my apple. <laughs> there it is. A piece of cardboard. So you want to get the smoke all up in your aura. And that cleanses your aura. I love the way it makes my chakras relax. <laughs> but then um, another of my threads is grounding. I like to take my shoes off for grounding. Get a better sense of the ground. And if you can, barefoot in the sand is like the best, but just socks is fine also, just never with sandals. <laughs> okay, so you wanna blow out all the images of socks with sandals. <laughs> you wanna blow, I'm kidding. All the, sort of, <laughs> all the negativity. Breathe in positive and then think an ultra positive thought. And you've cleansed your insides. So you can cleanse your inner air. <laughs> Chi and all that. So, I do all those things, smudging, grounding, before I meditate. And obviously, I gained a lot of well, all of this information really that I share with you today, except for the story of the Grateful Dead, I gained all of this information from meditating. So it's a huge part of my life now, and it 
has been in every life thus far. In every life that's in my book. So, another of my threads is that I've been a psychic medium for every one of my lives. I haven't always known it or understood it, but I've been a psychic medium for every one of my lives. So I'm still a psychic medium and I obviously still speak to the spirit realm. And the spirits have a theory. I guess you could call it a theory. It's I call it more fact now. I have not been able to disprove this theory. But the spirits say that people who've been reincarnated are also people who've been murdered. If that's the case, I've been murdered a lot. But I've been sharing a little bit of each of my lives with you every week. And um, every week I've been sharing with you the story of the Grateful Dead, like I said, as I heard it, from a deadhead, by a fire, as it should be done. Long, long ago, there was a traveler. It was so long ago that she traveled by foot. One day, while she was traveling, she happened upon a little village. As she got closer to the village, she noticed a crowd. As she got closer still, she noticed the crowd was angry and arguing. As she got closer still, she noticed the crowd was angry, arguing, and doing all of that over a dead body. Quite literally, body was laying right there and they were squabbling and the traveler just thought that this was disgusting. She thought it was disrespectful and she sought to do something about it. So she stopped the villagers and she said, no more of this. And she paid the dead man's debt. And she paid for a proper burial, because that's what they were arguing about. And she prayed over the dead man's grave. And she traveled on. And then one day, decades later, the traveler, same traveler from the beginning of the story, ends up in mortal peril this is life or death and some stranger just comes out of nowhere and just saves her life travelers take it aback she says thank you who are you where did you come from why did you save my life and the stranger simply says i I am the Grateful Dead. It's a story about reincarnation. Dead man 
obviously reincarnated and was reborn in a little baby body and it took him decades to grow up and become a person who could save another person's life. And he saw an opportunity to repay his debt to this traveler and remembered her and he repaid the debt and saved her life. It's not a corpse. Corpses don't save lives. It's not a zombie. Zombies don't save lives. It's a story about reincarnation. Now I talk about the Grateful Dead and that I'm a deadhead. Some of you might not understand. The Grateful Dead is a band. It's a 60s psychedelic rock band out of San Francisco. I've been into them since I was 12. And in this life. <laughs> and I, um, I have a thread that goes to the Grateful Dead. But also, the Grateful Dead, the band, got the name from a story, from that story that I just told you, which is in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, which is an old Buddhist story. Most Buddhists believe in reincarnation. So, it's a story about reincarnation. So last season, I discussed every life in my book a little. And this season, I've gone all the way back to the beginning of the book, to the very first life in my book, that of Little Flower, an ancient Mayan, who not only lived for over a thousand years, but also lived ten thousand years ago. I know. It's all been weird. It's weird. I told you we were going to get weird. We get weird here at Fireside Tales. I've talked about astral projection. We've talked about light. We've discussed Little Flower's culture. The history of the place that is now called Machu Picchu in Peru. What we know. And we've discussed her story. What I know. We've discussed Little Flower's birth parents her childhood, her schooling, her teen years, her higher education, her professions, her life, her love, the threads, murder, motives, afterlife. And today we are going to discuss time. is a vast and rather complicated thing. My spirit guides, we did a guided meditation here on Fireside Tales on how to meet your spirit guides. Check it out if you haven't. But my spirit guides always say 
all time is happening all the time. They have been saying this to me since I was a teenager. Now, saying that and understanding what it means are two different things. I've only just sort of begun to understand what that means. All time is happening all the time. I think what my book keeps is a record of all time for me, for my soul, my soul's all time. I think what the Akashic records keep is a record of all time. Because it's not space time, is it? Because space time is moving and evolving and changing and happening, right? But all time, I think, is different from space time. I think we're in space time now. I'm in space time now. And when I go to the Akashic Records, I'm an all-time. Does that make sense? So all-time is happening all the time. So that I might refer to it whenever I need to. In my book. I hardly even need to meditate to reach the information in my book anymore. I hardly need to actually meditate to meditate. It's so easy for me these days. I can do it while I'm walking. I can do it while I'm cooking. I can do it while I'm painting. I can do it while I'm playing music. It's super easy for me now. It used to be way more difficult. So don't be discouraged if it's difficult for you and you're just learning. And meditating is one of my threads, so it comes natural to me now. After 10,000 years, it should, right? <laughs> so we've also discussed... Um, spirits and the ability to communicate with them. Angels, stars, stargazing, stone, stones, like turquoise in particular. I might have a problem with turquoise. Um, you know, I think I might, forego before, I've been singing uh, a new song that I wrote for the show that's about reincarnation called Before, but before, before, I was singing David Crosby's Deja Vu every week. And um, David Crosby passed away recently, and it made me really sad. And um, I thought maybe we'd just do Deja Vu just, just once for David more. That's once more for David. So um, I'm not sure why I have the words to be for, but I think I'm, yeah, I'm... I want to do deja vu this week. So that's what we're going to do. So I don't need you.
Deja Vu is the only song I know of besides before that is about reincarnation specifically. So how to deal with all of you and I feel like I've been here before
Nice. You're already, David. Thanks for everything. I really love all of the songs. They really are quite good. I like Neil Young, too, and he wrote a lot for Crosby, Sills, and Nash, Buffalo Springfield as well, but I like them both. I just, I, I sing David's work better, <laughs> than, and I also can play it better for some reason. Neil's a little more complicated. So, we are wrapping up the season. Next week will be our last show of this season. Bear's upset about it. <laughs> no, Bear's actually upset because I forgot to feed him before we started the show. <laughs> and so now he has to wait till we're done. And I'll feed him. Don't worry. He's not starving. It's just lunch. Next week is the last show of the season, and then we will be back in the fall, or like when the kids start school. Usually I start the first week that they're back at school. <laughs> and um, we will be starting the new season in ancient Egypt. So we're going to... Part of the light, dry, sandy part of my book, where my lives lasted a long time. So we, there's a lot to discuss. So that's about it for me today. Have a weird and wonderful weekend. Thanks for starting it by my fireside. Thanks for watching.